Hello and welcome to Talking Churchill. Uh, I'm Dr. Warren Doctor, and I'm actually at uh, Churchill's home at Chartwell in Kent. And joining with me today is Catherine from the National Trust. Hello, Warren. Hi, Catherine. Um, I, I, and I've just been looking at the grounds today, and it's it's such a beautiful day in, in June. And I just wanted to ask you a few questions about Chartwell in general and, and sort of talk about your recent um, exhibit, A Death of a Hero. Of course. Um, so, so can you tell us a little bit about Churchill's country home? Well, Chartwell is uh, the home that Winston Churchill lived in for over 40 years of his life, and it's the home where he would very much seek refuge from the political pressures that he was under, particularly in the years of the 1920s and 30s during his political wilderness. It was where he spent a huge amount of his time uh, indulging his hobbies, be it painting, building the brick walls we have around the kitchen garden, enjoying the Golden North Ponds where he would sit for hours feeding the fish. So it's a lovely oasis of calm. Uh, that's what a lot of our visitors say. So it's a really calm, happy place, and you can see why Churchill loved it so much. How many of these walls did he actually build himself? He did is build he... them, yes, he did. And also the Mary Cot as well, which is a really lovely sort of scaled-up children's playhouse that he built for his youngest daughter, Mary. And it's a really, really lovely, sweet structure with a little fireplace inside and views out across the wheel. It's like a mini chart well just for her. <laughs> That's magnificent. And, and also, uh, I was wondering if you might explain why there's an orange marmalade cat running around. So yes, we have a marmalade cat here at Chartwell called Jock. He is the sixth incarnation of Churchill's own cat. And we have him as a result of a long-standing request from the Churchill family themselves that we should always have this cat here as a nod to Winston Churchill's own cat that he got given for his 88th birthday. And Winston and his cat were absolutely inseparable. There's some lovely photos of of him with this, this cat and Jock would go literally everywhere that Winston went and dinner wouldn't be allowed to start until Jock was there ready to have his as well. So they were very, very close companions, you could say, in the last few years of his life. So much so that actually when Winston Churchill was sadly um, passing away at 28 Hyde Park Gate, Jock was right there on the bed next to him and was notably devastated when he lost his master. So we are really happy to keep that bequest as part of what you see at Chartwell. And, you know, if you come visit, you might see him running around. Well, I can certainly say I think everyone should come visit Chartwell. But, but speaking of Churchill's death, I mean, this is obviously the 2015, 50 years after his death. And um, I was wondering if you might uh, talk a little bit about the importance of remembering Churchill's legacy. Absolutely. I think that 2015 is... is a really poignant year because 50 years I consider to be the point when uh, a subject matter starts to move out of living memory and become history. So this is a really crucial time in the story of the legacy of Winston Churchill where we need to make sure that we, we harness what was wonderful about his achievements and make sure that they're communicated as widely as possible. And that's something that we do here on a daily basis here at Chartwell. We, we tell the story of the incredible achievements of Winston Churchill not just during the, the dark days of the Second World War, but also things like his phenomenal achievements in terms of painting and writing. We've got his Nobel Prize here, for example, which is an incredible thing to have. And it is just so important that no one be allowed to forget how much of an impact that he had on the world. And I think that his legacy, hopefully, will live on for hundreds more years, but this is a time when we can really try and seal it in history. And, and, and one of the ways, and really effective ways, that you're doing this is through your exhibitions. And I've just gone through your most recent exhibition, which you put together quite brilliantly, um, uh, uh, Churchill, The Death of a Hero. And it's about Churchill's funeral and, and, and sort of the, the, the national moment of mourning. Can you talk a little bit about the exhibition? We wanted to mark the 50th anniversary with an exhibition to remind people of that incredible moment in time where... You know, it's, it's London, it's one of the most exciting cities in the world, it's the middle of the swinging 60s, and yet, because a 90-year-old statesman had died, the world just stopped. You could hear a pin drop in London, and it's incredible to think about that. I'm not sure that there's any event that could take place that would have similar impact in terms of so many people. And the fact that over 300,000 people walked past his coffin whilst it was lying in state in Westminster Hall just goes to show how incredibly emotive the events were of January in 1965 and so that's what we've tried to capture in this exhibition 
and we go from the very sad events of, of, of his last days in, in Hyde Park Gate through the lying in state and to the spectacle that was the state funeral. And we're very lucky to have some fantastic objects. We've got the original working copy of Operation Hope Not, which was the code name for the state funeral and has been kindly loaned to us from Arundel Castle, where it's normally in their archives. So we've got some wonderful, never-before-seen objects that you can come and see here at Chartwell and learn more about that incredible period of time in 1965. I, I also noticed a letter from current Prime Minister David Cameron, uh, who, who, who kindly wrote in and, and talked about inspirational Churchill quotes and how he looked to Churchill as an inspiration. Mm, well, we know that um, Mr Cameron is a, a huge Churchill fan, and uh, I, I believe actually has a painting of Winston Churchill on his uh, office walls. So he's a very prominent figure in, in his thinking. And there's a lovely quote in the letter which says that when Mr Cameron is, is facing really difficult situations, he'll often think, what would Winston do? And I absolutely love that. But 50 years on from his passing, our current prime minister, with, with very different... Uh, events to have to think about will still hark back to our greatest Britain and think how would he have handled that situation and almost seek inspiration from what he might have done. Churchill has certainly left a, a massive legacy that inspires uh, even today and, and something for all of us to consider. Uh, that's all the time we have today on Talking Churchill. Um, thank you very much for joining me and, and I look forward to uh, uh, next time.